In these boxes are hundreds of time machines. And these time machines are powered by crystallized pack rat urine. Pack rats are members of the genus Neotoma, and there are several different species, and they exhibit what you think of as stereotypical pack rat behavior. They collect leaves and seeds and twigs from the landscape, and they bring them back and they make a nest. They urinate on their midden. Their urine is very concentrated. It crystallizes and forms a rock hard encasing that we refer to as amber rat. It's that urine that really protects the fossils and preserves them for tens of thousands of years. This is a 53,000-year-old midden, so this juniper seed is 53,000 years old. This bear grass, 53,000 years. All of this cactus spines, 53,000 years old. I spent a lot of my career studying these curious and unorthodox deposits called pack rat middens. Pack rat middens were not something that people knew they could extract information about past environments, secrets of the past, until about 1960. In 1960, these deposits were discovered by Phil Wells and Clive Jurgensen. It was then that the pack rat midden method was born. So I came down here and started working with Julio, who was my, my master's and my PhD advisor. He did literally write the book, and we've continued to collaborate throughout the years. The midden is a treasure trove of plant material, and so once we collect it in the field, we'll bring it back to the lab. The first thing you've got to do is dissolve the urine, and the urine is water-soluble drop them into a bucket of water uh, and let them dissolve. Some of them take a couple of weeks to dissolve. Then we'll wet sieve it, we'll dry it, and we're left with all of the loose plant parts. At that point, we can take a look at it under a dissecting microscope so we can really see the variation in the plants. So we can identify things often as species and sometimes even subspecies because of the exquisite preservation of the plant fossils within the middens. And so we have in these deposits, these snapshots of the vegetation at a particular time over the last 50,000 years. This is really how we know what the past vegetation looked like. There's some excellent examples of sort of before and after midden research started. Basically, we thought that the Sonoran Desert with all these plants with very curious adaptations to aridity, think of a saguaro, think of a Palo Verde with a photosynthetic bark. People thought that those were age-old adaptations that had been there for tens of millions of years, basically since the Miocene. People thought that it more or less, you know, looked the way it it does now. We did a midden study that spanned the last 60,000 years. And in fact, we were finding junipers and pinyon pine in those deposits. In the Sonoran Desert, you'd find that instead of having saguaros and palo verdes and the things that you see here, you'd have woodlands. There was a lot more moisture, it was cooler, and it allowed these woodlands to move further down in elevation from where they are today. The Sonoran Desert, you know, it's basically a, a recent development, a recent meaning in the last 10,000 years or so. 
I was uh, having lunch with an old friend from grad school yesterday and she was talking about trying to eradicate the pack rats from her property because of course they do cause some destruction to their lawn furniture and stuff like that, right? But it's that behavior that leaves us with really this wonderful archive of the past. I work with pee, I work with poo, right? But they tell us so much. It's really this treasure.